everybody and welcome to a YouTube video with Carrie. Uh, Carrie, what is your business name? My business name is Color Me Creative. Yay, and she is local to Pensacola, right? Yes. Yay, and she's going to show us how to do what? A basic look, I guess? A sexy a look? A basic look. Yep, simple basic look. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to be asking her some questions because I'm thinking about the woman who is 35 and older, and she's going to try and help us learn um, some nice things to do with our makeup and eyebrows, because she was like, should I do my eyebrows? I was like, yes, we want to know how you do your eyebrows. Um, I'm most excited to see how you do eyeshadow because I have a hooded eye, personally. Um, right. And as I age, it only gets more hooded. So yay for that. Yay. <laughs> that is a doctor's fix. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch the camera over to you and I'll just let you go through it. All right, so I'm going to start with my skincare routine just because skincare is important with any makeup. So I'm going to start by cleaning my face. I use this currently. I have those. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got them from BoxyCharm. I love BoxyCharm, yes. That's where I get all my skincare. That's why I have a million different products. I know that's Me the too. I can't help it. Right, and that's why I can never decide like what to use for which makeup look because I have so much that I love. Right. But Where's... I love these because it's a little pad. It's already pre-soaked with what you need to clean your face. This one I will actually buy again. Let me, oh wait, let me bring it to the camera. I don't know. Do you remember this yeah, one? Oh, LMF so rose oil. Oh. Yeah. I just, I put it on at night and I put it on my wrist and I know that it's like supposed to be like some kind of collagen oil, but I just like it because it smells nice. I'm pretty sure they're also on that website I was telling you about. Oh yes. We're going to tell you about that website later. And I also like their little dropper that it has a little ball at the end. And then right, yeah. I, I got into that brand when I went on my first cruise to Alaska. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. I I'm actually like, well, I have a whole box of BoxyCharm stuff. I'm just going to ask you what you think about all of them. Right. I, I'm telling you, I love BoxyCharm. And it's the best way to stock up and get a, I guess, a basic buildup for a makeup kit and skincare kit. Yeah, you know. I have, see, I, I guess because I do makeup at the studio and I already have so much makeup, I'm right. more excited about their skincare than I am about their, um, their makeup. And they keep sending me, I don't know, it would be a good lip color for you. Um, it's like a, it's like a pinky color from Iconic. They sent me uh -huh. two of them and I keep going, this is not anywhere in my natural olive skin kind of tones. Right, right. It'd be um, good for a blonde. I already gave it they, away to they one. Send me, they send me ones that are way too dark. Well, we can trade out then, because I will take your dark <laughs> ones. I want to look like, you know, gothy. That's the color. Right. I like berries and reds and almost blacks, browns. Occasionally, I like to do a uh, edgy, gothy look, but not very often. Yeah, you have a lot of funky lip colors. Yes, I do. Um, this is actually Elemis, uh, facial toner. Okay. So that's the same people as the rose oil. Yeah. Um, this w is just actually like a skin toner to even out the, you know, the tone of your skin. But this was the, my mom had got them in bulk and we split them up into little bottles. So after your facial cleansing pad has dried on your face, yeah. I like to go in with this toner. Just because I have, I don't know if you can see, but I have a lot of uneven spots on my skin. Mm -hmm. So I like to just like spritz it. Nice. And, and that's like a, a primer? That's the toner, the skin toner. Like to it even out. Your skin toner. Would you use like a vitamin C kind of serum to help even that out? Like for patchy skin? Well, just having dark spots and um, not so much like texture patchy but color mm -hmm. patches. Um, I would recommend some vitamin C. Nature Valley brand. Mm -hmm. um, like the common vitamin brand that you see at Walmart that's in the green bottles with the yellow caps. Right. Um, they, have, they have a vitamin E oil that, like I used it to take away my stretch marks after having kids and my stretch marks completely went away. And I had those deep, really dark purple stretch marks. 
well, I'm going to run out and get vitamin E. I mean, I did okay through that, but I mean, as I've lost weight over the past year, I've noticed that they have gotten, I don't know if I would say brighter or more defined, but I could definitely use that. I use a lot of coconut oil. Yeah. Coconut oil is good too. Um, I just, I didn't have any luck with coconut oil for myself. So this is the primer I'm going to use. This is another boxy charm thing. I just got that. Yes, yes. I was so excited. I thought I lost it. I almost cried. I love it because it, it does exactly what it says. It hydrates and it's going to fill in like any pores, any, um, I don't want to say holes, but. Right now I get what you're saying. Crevices. Yeah. Now, what about, do you have issues because. Um, I'm almost 40. I'll be 40 next month. And I have noticed, even though I feel like I have a good texture of skin, maybe not so much <laughs> color pigmentation, but my texture is pretty good. Um, right. But I'm getting creasing with, especially in my older clients at the studio too, creasing in the eyes and their foundation from when their skin folds are touching and they're getting warm and the foundation. I'm, I'm going to show oh. you a trick that I actually just recently learned about that has been good for me because I used to have the same problem with creasing or just not one to stay in place mm -hmm. but primers and that's why I like using anything that's a lotion like this coconut oil face lotion it all fills in any of your pores or gaps that way your foundation will just lay smoothly and evenly across your face I'm gonna use this fluffy brush also another boxy charm thing yep i've got that one as well yeah this is what i like to use to put on my primer you can use a uh, a sponge if you want see i've never put a primer on with um anything other than my fingers am i doing that wrong is that bad you know there really is no right or wrong way i'm just a little weird mm -hmm. um i don't like to use my fingers no. Um, so on top of my primer, just because it's more liquidy and for the little secret I'm going to show you about creasing. Yep. I kind of, I like to use a liquid, well, a little more of a liquid because the primer was liquid as well. So you just double priming. Well, yeah. You know, I double you know prime. What, um, Nikki says it's to, it's a crime not to prime. Right, exactly. So. Yeah, so I, I double prime because I'm a little anal about it. Hey, your face will not crack. <laughs> <laughs> and then at once this dries, I'm going to go over it with um, setting spray. This is the Jeffrey Morphe setting spray. I like stuff that smells like fruit, and this smells like strawberries. After your primer and uh -huh. your setting spray dry, just go in with a big fluffy brush and lightly dab on powder. And it You're does really the same thing. It does the same thing that your uh, primer does. Mm -hmm. And it fills in any extra cracks or holes from your pores that there may be. This but it's also going to give a nice sleek foundation for your foundation. But then I move to my eyebrows just because I don't want to have to mess up my foundation if I accidentally mess up my eyebrows, which is See, not I always uncommon. do my, um, my eyes before anything. Uh -huh. I do my eyebrows and then I do my eyeshadow. So I use this Morphe pencil. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not gel, but it's not like one that you have to sharpen. Right. right. Okay. This yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I use to line my eyebrow, like to outline them to the shape that I want. And they say that you're, you should start drawing from the end and work forward. I don't just because it's habit for me to start here and work my way up or work my way, my way back. So they want you to work from here and then inwards? Yeah. They want you to work from your tail, tail. inwards because you're supposed to go lighter here, like really light brush strokes mm -hmm. but because i know that i'm supposed to use light brush strokes like i just start out with just, light brush strokes yeah yeah and, well, that makes sense. and at the top when i'm filling it in like i don't i don't go all the way to this line right like this line is shorter and further back than this one is so you taper it and you kind of shade it right 
first I just I get the shape I want or at least a rough sketch of the shape I want and then I'll go to filling in because I do that ombre thing where I use a darker shade on the tail and do a lighter shade in the beginning. What I'm doing is I filled in maybe half mm -hmm. of my eyebrow with my darker color. Is this then, the same color you outlined with? Yep, yeah, this is the same color I outlined with because it's the darkest eyebrow color I own. Which is, normally these match my wigs because most of my wigs have a darker root. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going this way, like... With the spoolie? I'm going horizontally, li very lightly, like I'm holding it at the very, very end. And just smudging the, the uh, gel pen, I, I guess it is? Yeah, lightly, very lightly brushing it, but I'm also brushing upwards. That way it has that natural look. And that gel it. will also help hold it, right? Yes. Or the... And, Doing this, like brushing up and horizontally, will actually help spread it to the front of your eyebrow to give it what your natural eyebrow looks like. So it's very opaque. light and almost opaque, translucent at the mm -hmm. front. And it's okay if it gets messy because I'm going to show you how to clean it up. Yeah, you're going to carve it out, right? Yeah, I'm going to carve it out. This is my, it's not really much lighter than the one I just used, but it's... Mm -hmm. It's lighter ish. And I'm I'm not even gonna go very far with it. Just maybe like a quarter. So you're just giving the middle part a shading. Right. And then I'm gonna use the smudge brush that came with it. This is from Billion Dollar Brows. I also got this in a boxy charm box. I did not wait, no, I did not get that one. Yeah, I, found I think some it stuff was, I didn't like from them for brows. <laughs> I think this was in the Lux one, uh, but it, it came with this nice smudge brush, nice, which is phenomenal because it'll give you the same effect as me using the spoolie brush mm -hmm. to brush and spread it out. So it gives you the light feathered look. It does. It, it definitely feathered it out very nicely. Yeah. It just seems I, so natural. I love, love, love this brush. And this brush works with any eyebrow pencil. Any eyebrow yeah, pencil. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be billion dollar brows, but it, it works and I love it. So now I'm going to clean them up. And this is what I've been using lately. This you can get on the Morphe website. Mm -hmm. It's called P. Louise. It's very creamy, movable, easy to work with. Eye primer. You can use this as an eyeshadow primer. You can use it as a concealer to clean up your eyebrows. There is literally multiple uses, and they come like they have a very big shade oh, range. Like, yeah, different like these, colors. Yeah, and they come bigger. Like this is the big, big one. Wow. Yeah. So I just like to put a dab of this on my hand. And then this is a brush from Crown Cosmetics. It's a mm -hmm. flat oval brush that I'm going to use. And Crown, fun fact, Crown brushes are actually Morphe brushes. Morphe gets their brushes from Crown, but if you get them straight from the Crown website, they're cheaper. Some people don't like to carve out the top of their eyebrows. I like mine to be very sharp and bold. So I like to carve, depending on the tonality of your skin, you might have to go a shade darker to carve out the top or a shade lighter, just depending. And then I'm gonna go back in with my smudge brush and take some of that product and mush it into my eyebrows which gives it that nice ombre type look. And then I have product left over from doing my eyebrows.
So I'm going to take my sponge and wet it. I'm going to use my little spray bottle and wet it. Because the rule of thumb is if your product is liquid slash cream, you want to use a wet blending sponge. And I'm going to put the base on for my eyeshadow. Since we're doing a neutral look, I'm going to keep the base slash eyelid primer for my eyeshadow a neutral color. If I were to do a bold color, I would go with white because it makes colors pop. It looks a little ridiculous, but once everything's all said and done, it'll be better. I'm trying to narrow it down to what eyeshadow palette I wanted to use. We're actually going to use a combination. This is Fenty Beauty palette, the Moroccan Spice palette. Ooh, pretty. And then, I don't even know how to pronounce this one, but I just got this in the Boxy Charm. Oh, yeah, I just There's got this also... too. Oh, no, I got gold. Mm. Oops. So, I'm going to start with this color right here. So, this is a uh, kind of pointed brush. I love that brush. Yes. I love a big fluffy brush like that. This is a Morphe brush, and I'm going to use this and that Thank color. You, and just lightly, again, I hold all my brushes on the end because you don't want a lot of pressure. You don't want to heavy hand it and lightly go in the crease area now i go above the crease because i have a hooded eye and i want my makeup to feel a little bit more open i but was gonna say if, well. if you're someone who has a hooded eye you're gonna want to go a little bit above your crease it just saves you have you don't have as much work to do as as i do right because i don't have as much i don't have the, the space right now with this in your crease, using the light pressure and when you, like you're just gonna lightly rub on the color and then me, so that way I don't have so much fallout, I kinda like just to tap it. Yeah, I do my, a double tap too. Mm, yeah. I don't want the fallout to get underneath my eyes. Right, I mean that's why I wait to do my foundation last because nine times out of 10, I always have something get under my eye. Mm -hmm. I'm using and again I'm gonna go this time I'm gonna go like right in my crease with this sort of fluffy skinny brush like a flat one yeah I like to use my eye primers with those yeah this is from Moda Moda Studio also another boxy charm brush right this is gonna be kind of my defining color we're going for a natural not necessarily smoky eye, but smoky-ish. Again, holding it at the end, but kind of like dabbing it. Right. Eye. Now, with a hooded eye, would you suggest that they come all the way to the um, inner part like that? No. Okay. Too far in here, it's going to make your eye look even more close. And right. for people with hooded eyes, the goal is to make your eye look more open. Right, exactly. Okay. And I'm going back in with that round brush and whatever was left of the first eyeshadow color and just doing small circular motions to blend out that crease color. This is a large shader brush from Luxie. Also, okay, yeah. also Boxy, Boxy Charm. Charm. We are a whole video dedicated <laughs> to using Boxy Charm <laughs> I'm saying like Boxy Charm needs to notice this video. <laughs> right. I'm going to go in with, I'm trying to show you this bottom shade right here i love that color but that pink color above it that redder one oh i love that too we're gonna we're gonna use that too oh yes good i was like that's a gorgeous lip color too yes it is my favorite type of lip color mm -hmm. and this one we're gonna go right here on the outer corner this is gonna be that smoky effect either I, like a v or an alligator shape where you would stop your crease color is where I would stop my top alligator lip. Okay. 
That would be cute. Call it an alligator lip. Yeah. Um, when it comes to this outer corner, if mm -hmm. you don't want it, like if you want it to be sharper and you aren't that great at carving out or if you can't do like a cut crease like that, um, tape. Nice. I like Any, this tape because it says crime scene on it. <laughs> this is from Makeup a Murder and their whole like makeup is all about crime. Oh and my it's so gosh. cute. I love but it. But they have like this is actual makeup tape. Okay. So we're gonna go in with that red color that you like. That gorgeous. Yeah, it's like a on mine, it's like a corally color. Oh, it's like red. a it's a mauvey corally mixture of red okay so it's got um a little more maroon to it then right yeah um, i'm using this brush which came in the colorful set okay i gave it to amber yeah i like it because it's very i'm a beautiful. huge fluffy brush person right i like it just because it's easier to blend and smudge exactly and I'm going to go like right here along that alligator lip I just did just to have like an accent color and blend it into the darker outer corner color and up in your crease. Now, have you ever thought about doing um, makeup videos um, for like clients where you would be able to see them and you could show them what to do on their face? You know, funny thing is, is when you asked me if I wanted to do this, I was like, how cool would it be to offer that to my clients? Like I was thinking about it all day today. I was thinking, and I was just thinking it too, because I was just like, how cool would it be for, you know, for you to have your client, you know, set up with the right lighting and have all the makeup in front of them. And then for you to go through that with them so that you could teach them how to do it. Because so, you could do that across the country, no matter where they were right and especially now with everything going on like mm -hmm. how cool would it be to you know give them an opportunity to feel good about themselves right since i can't be there with them in person well oh, that's cute this is the thirsty palette from jeffree star and it, you it have a, a running theme with some goals for sure right. right like it has a neutral and different color mm -hmm. i did a dab like i dab here here and here mm -hmm. and Kind of, it looks like a orally light baby pink ish mm -hmm. color, and I'm gonna use that as a base right here. Oh, before that's kind I, of gorgeous with those colors. I'm doing that before I put my shimmer, just to show that you know if you don't want to do shimmer, you can do like a small pop of color like, like this. I mean, you can change it up for your skin tone. Like if you need to go darker, by all means go darker, but Again, the factors to consider are eye shape, your age, and like how your skin will handle that color. So right. this is the only time I'm going to use my finger. Okay. I'm going to use this white shimmer and this pink shimmer Ooh. as a mixture. And I'm just going to like lightly rub it and then I'm going to pat over what I just did. Now, is there a reason that you use your finger here or are you out of clean brushes? Uh, no, I like using my finger here because depending on how bold or subtle you want the shimmer to be, um, if you want it to be more subtle, I like using my finger. But if you want it bold, I would definitely suggest using a somewhat dense, kind of like this brush. Okay, yeah. Now, see, I think actually that's more along the lines of something that I use my primer with. Yeah, that's see, this, is. you can tell it's not, it doesn't move as much like a fluffy brush. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of dense, and that's what I would do if I wanted it to be more bold. Okay, so now I'm oh, going to okay. do foundation. That's a pretty cover. It is. This is also um, another direct sales company. This is Mascara Beauty. Mm-hmm. Um, these are cream foundations. Now, do they sell those individually where you can choose your own color palette? Uh-huh. And they're $14 and some change of 10, mm -hmm. but they last forever. 
literally forever. Like a little bit goes a long way. I'm about to show you. Like, but when you buy quality products, that's normally true. Right. And I'm going to use. I have that brush. I got these two. And then I think I had a smaller one to like do my nose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I like using this one with my cream foundation. Like this is how much product I have on my brush. On the cream. Yeah. Uh-huh. And this is the this is my highlight color. Okay. What what I love about this is I can do all of my colors all at once. Like that's how much that little bit. Yeah, it's 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 so highlighted, but that's because of the lighting that you're using. Yeah, and blowing out. I tried to. It's a little better, but it's a highlight. It's what happens when you put highlight on on light. I don't ever put highlight right here. I just no, I don't either. I put it at the top of my lip, though. Yeah, I do. I do put a little bit right here, and I kind of put a little bit down the nose. I'm gonna go in with a mixture of these two colors. This is gonna be like my primary foundation color. Now I take my foundation like on my bottom earlobe and kind of up here, mm -hmm. just because I'm wearing my hair up mm -hmm. and I don't want my ear to be a different color than. And depending on what type of shirt you're going to be wearing, for the love of Jesus, blend your neck. I agree. So I like to use, like, this tannish, very taupey color. Mm -hmm. Like, all at, like, the areas that are red, I would add that to it because it has a little bit of that orangish mm -hmm. hue, orangish yellowish hue, which would do the same thing as if I were to use a green coat corrective color right well and I just recently took a master class with Roberto here in Pensacola like he's from I was gonna Pensacola go to that recently. at um Joe Rich's place right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I was gonna go to that and I forgot um, that I was there and let me tell you I learned so much because again I'm not a natural makeup person normally like I am not gonna wear natural makeup all the time but I learned so much and I learned that you should use your product to create the effect you want, but not to be seen. So when you're doing contour, you don't want it to, you don't want that harsh line right here, but you want to see the effect of your contour before you see the product. So speaking of contour, I'm actually going to do mine right now. I'm going to use this color and just dab it. We're going to eventually blend this all out with a, a beauty blender. I love this. This color. is the blush color I'm going to use. I wouldn't use that color so much on me because I'm a much more olive skin tone, so I would go more orange. Right. Uh, but I love that as a lip color. <laughs> I need a pinky purple for my skin tone, and this is the second thing and only thing that I will use my finger for as well. Mm -hmm. Just because I, don't, I haven't found a brush I like that's small enough and dense enough for me to be able to do it with a brush i feel like you're going right there on that highlight contour middle area right there i am i am going like right here like kind of on but above my right. contour line normally if i were to do a powder blush mm -hmm. i would actually again do that alligator lip thing mm -hmm. because that's how i like to wear my blush and go right here You've got great cheekbones too to wear blush, so. But I would all like I'll also put my highlighter right here as well. Right, but closer to the uh, inside of your eyes, right here. Mm -hmm. not, yeah, you contour out or you do the dark out here. So I'm gonna use this blender. I don't use this end. I was gonna say I, mean, I get those, but I never use that end. I feel like it's I, I don't for under your eyes. Uh huh. Most people use them under their eye. I like this end under my eye. I do too because I feel like it gets more in there. <laughs> right. And I'm just literally going to beat my face and dab this in there. Now, have you tried the magnetic eyelashes? Because I'm, I love them. I'm actually going to use them today. I'm going to go in with that coconut powder again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that I've done my setting powder again, I'm going to go in with some powder contour just to define it slightly 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep that rule of thumb that you want to see the effects of it, not the product itself, and use this brush. Mm -hmm. It's a rounded, fluffy brush. Most people that I've seen would use a brush like this to do contour. I feel like this is too, too harsh. Sharp. Yeah. yeah, it's too sharp, and I don't like it. So I'm going to use this color and this color together. And, and whose palette is that? This is Mevron, or I don't know how to say it properly. Oh yeah, no, uh, I have um, I have their um, their face paints. Yeah, it's very. I was about to say it's very well known for their special effects supplies. I'm going to use this and this color just to do this area right here, and I'm yeah. actually using a blush brush to do so. I changed the color of my highlighter for under my eyes and my forehead. I'm going to do a mixture of these two because I don't want it too bright, but I also want it a smidge bit brighter. Right. That way it's a little bit defined, but not too much. So when I, you know, if I were to get my pictures taken, right. it's not, it's not going to make me look like Casper. This is my blush colors that I like to do. This is from Alamar Cosmetics, another boxy charm find. Oh, no, I, I don't use, think I got that one. I love this brand for blush really? because blush it is comes in this nice blush. little trio and it's perfect for what I learned from Roberto. So I use this corally and peachy color combined. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my preference, I like to do that little alligator shape right here just because I feel like for me, it defines my face. And then I'm going to use this brush from the crown case. I love that brush. I know. It's cute because it looks like a little pencil. I love that it just it kind of looks like a bouquet of flowers for a wedding. Right. You know? It just and looks like it would blend beautifully. I'm going to use this color, but I'm literally going to do the lightest dab of it and barely get any on my brush. And if you were to smile, like, where your cheekbones, yep, like right here. I'm just gonna dab it right there because it will draw attention right there and blend it. So it's noticeable, oh, but not, not too noticeable. No, it's just a kiss of color. This is highlighter like the shimmery type of highlighter and this the is Jeffrey the 24 Star. karat gold one from Jeffree Star. You don't have to do highlighter. Again, personal preference and you know if you feel like you're too old to do it then don't. Do a little bit of this with a fan brush mm -hmm. just to like lightly dust it on. I mean, you can see like you can see the shimmer effects, but it's not it's not too much. I won't add any more product and I'll just like right on my nose. Mm -hmm. That way it's not too much unless now I will say I intentionally sometimes put too much right there mm -hmm. just because it, it looks cute with some looks. This is wet and wild. Oh, I have yeah. one of their eyeliners that I've been using for years and I'm obsessed with it. I, I forgot all you. about this brand because I had become a makeup snob for a little while and I got sent this in a goodie bag and fell in love with it all over again. And I chose this color for this look thinking of the age group right. of 30 to 50 because most women in that age range that I've come in contact with, they don't want bold black eyeliner. No, not anymore. And I, I like this just because it gives a nice effect but it's not too much. Right. This is the mascara I'm going to use. This is from Wander Beauty. It's the... I've never seen a mascara like this before. I didn't see it until I got it in my Boxy Charm box this month. But I like the bristles on it. The only thing that sucks with mine is because I got the black liner. They do uh -huh. have a gray one which I would have preferred to use if I had it for this look. These are the Tory Bell Magnetic Lashes. 
I had been avoiding these people like the plague because they come in my inbox just about every day. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I have a lash lady that I get my strip lashes from. I'm not going to do it. And then I was like, what the heck? I'll give it a try just to say I tried it. So that way I can tell people how I feel about it. I will say because I wear glasses, they weren't too long. I got the fluffiest, shortest ones that they had. Now you're a tattooed person. Have you ever thought about doing the um, eyelash tight lining where it's like eyelash thickening? Um, I have honestly never heard of that. It's basically think of the thinnest amount of eyeliner that you could put on just in your eyelash line, just to uh -huh. get the illusion that you have more eyelashes. I would probably actually really consider that. See, I would too, because I think it's those, like, I'm going to get my eyebrows um, microbladed. I need to go ahead and put down on my deposit because I know that she's booked out to like. Is it, um, like, is she with microblade, microblade Pensacola? Pensacola? Yeah. 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 She's the best. I can't wait. She's the best there is in this area, I swear. Um, I'm 100% doing her. I know it's yeah. expensive, but you know. I want Worth eyebrows it. that doesn't look like they're from 1990. You pay what you get for. This is true. They're cute. They're really cute and they subtle. Are. I'm going to take the same three colors I did for the inner corner. I'm going to go underneath my waterline just to give an extra pop of color right here. Since I'm not doing eyeliner on my waterline, mm -hmm. it'll kind of like tie it all together. Now, if you were doing the very bold winged, wing, well, not even winged liner, like if you were to use the tape or not use the tape and have that sharp line mm -hmm. right there, you don't have to do this. I like doing it for all of my makeup looks, but especially because I did the soft, flowy, natural look. Mm -hmm. And then for lipstick, I'm going with this nude sticks. This has become my new favorite lipstick because it's super soft. It almost feels like you're putting eyeshadow on your lips. Mm. That's how soft it is. And it's called Wakiki Rose. I like that color. I love this color. Now, of course, I see Marley. Marley did a vermilion line for me, so I don't need to use lip liner. But Now, what is that? Like, she defined the line around my lip uh, because I also, on my bottom lip, had a small bump. Oh, yeah, I had a scar right here. She filled in for me. Yeah, so she went ahead and did a vermilion line, which has been great. It keeps my lipstick from going anywhere. That sounds like my next thing to get from her. And I totally forgot to put it on before I did my lipstick, but I would definitely do my Hyla lip before mm -hmm. I do my lipstick just because it's nourishing. And that's what you got from um, Marley. Uh -huh, that's what I got from Marley. It's nourishing. It's going to help maintain the effects of my lip filler, help my line, like my lips not have those lines. Okay. Now this is another tip and trick I'm going to show. I'm going to take a really skinny makeup brush Mm -hmm. And just to soften up the line, I'm literally just like rubbing it. So are you going slightly outside your natural lip line or do you feel slight fill slightly inside your your lip line? I I go slightly outside because I this is where like I want Marley to make my lips look next time. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. The lip injections and the lip flip. Like, I can't live without it. See, now I'm going to be like, whatever you did to carry, do to you. Right. And now we're all done. I'm going to take my setting spray again and just that way it's not, for me, it won't crease. It won't go anywhere. It's going to be right here unless I constantly put my hands on my face. And now more than ever, like is the time to clean your makeup brushes and make sure they stay clean and sanitized. This is from Cinema Secrets. It's also another one of those things on the Afterpay website. Okay. 
Um, but this is a cleaner and disinfectant. It's 99.99% bacteria free. That's a great point, especially right now. Right. And it's quick drying. So I could literally clean this brush right now, like spritz it with this stuff and then instantly use it again. I just use old wash rags that I, you know, wash and disinfect every right. time. And I mean, I'll just spritz the brush, let it sit there for a minute, and then I will take it and rub it out yep. until it's clean. And if I have to spritz it again, I'll spritz it again. Right. Another thing I wanted to mention as far as like lip care, mm. um, if you feel like you have really dry or chapped lips, I would do a lip scrub. I mean, it's, it's pricey. I won't lie. Like this was like 60 bucks. It's ter by, by Terry. Okay. This one is the tinted Balm de Rose. I watched Roberto use this on our model that had really chapped lips. And by the time we were ready to put lipstick on, her lips were smooth and flat. So I really like this stuff. It, it's pricey, but in my opinion, well worth it if that's something you suffer with. Some of my favorite lipsticks that aren't drying, at least in my opinion they're not, is NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment. It's not drying. It feels pretty nourishing. And then of course this Nude Sticks. Like I said, this has become my new favorite. Like it literally feels like I'm wearing nothing. Well, thank you so much, Carrie. Um, go ahead and tell everybody again where they can, um, where they can find you at um facebook i have my personal page at carrie buhite um my professional page is the original mermaid where i post oh, my cute. hair makeup <laughs> and lashes instagram is color me color underscore me underscore creative and tiktok is at carrie the colorist that's cute I came up with Color Me Creative when I finally made the decision that I was going to slowly phase out of doing hair. I want to eventually have my own makeup line and brand. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that all sounds good. It sounds like you've, you've, you're well on track to making the world beautiful.